Guys, today we're gonna to show you how to take your GoPro footage to the next level by using ND filters. These are basically sunglasses for your camera lens. They're, they're tinted glass that you put in front of the lens on your GoPro. Why would you wanna do that? Well, as we'll learn today, it's to get more motion blur and to get a more cinematic image. We've got our GoPro strapped to an FPV drone, which is one of the coolest ways to use these cameras. Oh yeah. Let's get into it. Let's do it. Here at Rotorite, we fly these FPV drones. FPV stands for first person view. So you've mm -hmm. maybe seen shots like this before. Maybe you've seen drone racing on TV before. Yep. And so we're gonna fly these drones around this awesome park here in Central Florida. We'll do some flying in 30 frames a second. We'll also do some like 60 frames and maybe some even higher frame rate, yep. some slow motion type shots. And we'll talk about, you know, the changing of the ND filters as we do that as well. So I'm gonna walk you guys through my process for how I choose an ND filter. This isn't actually specific to freestyle, but some of the GoPro settings that I use are specific to freestyle. So we'll have another video on that, but the same process applies for how you choose your ND filter. So to understand exactly what an ND filter does, let's think about taking a photograph, just a single still image. When you make a photograph, you expose the image for a certain amount of time, and that's what the shutter speed defines. How long is the image sensor being exposed to the image? A faster shutter speed means a shorter exposure, longer means longer exposure. Sometimes you want this, sometimes you don't want this. Imagine if you're taking a photograph of someone throwing a baseball, like a pitcher, you might wanna use a very fast shutter speed so that you have a very crisp image of their athletic motion. But imagine if you were doing something more cinematic and you wanted to make it look fast, like a image of a car racing across, then you might wanna use a longer shutter speed so that you get blur. Essentially what you're doing is you are exposing that image over a period of time and during that exposure your subject or the background or whatever is moving and that's going to show up as blur. So if you understand what I'm saying about how this works in a photograph, you understand how this works for a video because a video is nothing more than a series of photographs over a period of time. When we talk about a video being made in 30 frames per second, that means for every second of video there are 30 photographs, 30 frames. So we're just doing this very, very fast. So you can use an ND filter shooting videos the same way that you do in making a photograph. So yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and get my phone out. We're gonna go to the GoPro app. And I'm gonna make sure all of my settings are correct on my GoPro first. Mm -hmm. And then simply I'm gonna turn my GoPro on and we're just gonna look at the sky. But there's this relationship between motion blur and how much light gets on the image sensor. So you have to think about your exposure, are you gonna blow out the image, right? A very long shutter speed could just wash out everything, it's so bright, or a short shutter speed could be too dark. And so to compensate for this, there's different things that you can do, like playing with the ISO, or the aperture, or using ND filters. So you're gonna be shooting in 30 FPS and 1 60th shutter speed. Correct. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just double check that my GoPro settings are the way that I like them. Mm -hmm. So we can do that here, 4K 30 super view, 10 bit high shutter speed, one over 60. Mm -hmm. A good rule of thumb to target for a nice cinematic look is to have a shutter speed that is double the frame rate. So what that would mean is that if you are making a 30 frames per second video, you would want your shutter speed to be 1 60th of a second. To show you this kind of in real time, we're gonna change the camera settings of what you're looking at right now. We just tuned the camera you're looking at right now to be very sensitive to light with the ISO and the aperture, and we have made the shutter speed very fast. It's at what, one six thousandth? Sixteenth, it's at one sixteen thousandth of a second. That is a very fast exposure. Now, as I wave my hand, look, look at this. It looks like a strobe light almost, right? It does not look like what you would see with your real eye. So now let's go back to camera settings that we would actually want to use. So now we've brought the ISO back down to a reasonable level and even put an ND filter on the camera, which has allowed us to set the shutter speed to a longer 1 60th of a second, which is exactly what we would want for this 30 frames per second video. And that's gonna be a lot more similar to what you would see with the, the human eye. And when I move my hand, you see blurred motion rather than strobe motion. And that looks more natural, it looks more cinematic. It's generally just more pleasant of an image. So this is exactly how you can use an ND filter to decrease the amount of light and enable a longer shutter speed to make the image a lot more pleasant. I'm gonna put my ISO at 155, sharpness medium, and that's pretty much it. So now what we can go back is we can enable the preview on the GoPro. 
And then all we're gonna do is we're just gonna point it up at the sky and we're gonna see how blown out we are. And we're yeah. most likely gonna be really blown out. As you guys were talking about, depending on your shutter speed and your frame rate, mm -hmm. that's gonna change how much ND that you need. But usually yeah. with a one over 60 shutter speed, you're gonna probably need a lot of ND on a day like today where it's pretty bright outside. Yeah. And you can see well, that it's so overexposed, completely blown out. There's no detail there. So we're going to use an ND filter to let in less light so that it'll yep. be properly exposed. So the ND filters come in different levels of darkness and the higher the number, the darker it is. What we're trying to do with ND filters is almost always trying to increase the amount of blur. So we decrease our shutter speed, we have a longer exposure, and then we use an ND filter to decrease the amount of light being let in over the course of that exposure. The ND filter is essentially sunglasses for the lens of your camera. And so what we do here on the camera, if you're using a GoPro camera, these just simply unscrew. It takes a little bit of force mm -hmm. the first time you do it. And then after that, just pops out like that. Make sure you don't, you know, get dirt on the lens or anything like that. Yep, which one did you like first? I'd say let's try with the 16 first. Why did you go with that decision? So I, from experience, know that uh, like an ND4 and ND8 is probably not gonna be enough on a bright day like this. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, I like to use an ND8 around sunset. Okay. ND4 actually once the sun has gone down even sometimes. Mm -hmm. But usually in like bright daylight, I like to use an ND32. Because we're in this like tree section and there's a lot of dark spots I'm gonna be flying, yeah. I'm a little concerned that 32 is too much. I could compensate with a little more ISO, but I like to keep that as low as possible. How so come? we're gonna, because when you add ISO, you just add a lot of graininess to the camera. And so I like to lock it at 100. So I'd rather be a little uh, overexposed when I'm looking up at the sun, but be perfectly exposed whenever I'm under the tree canopy, which is where I'm gonna be doing you know, most of my flying. Yeah. So let's start with either, uh, yeah, let's start with the 16. 16. And yeah. these filters, they just go right on, like so. Oh, that looks so much better, right when you put it on. Yep, and even with the 16, if I'm looking straight up at the sun, you could see it's like if we had like a um, wave chart, it would be like a tiny bit blown out. But man, when you're looking down here at the trees and everything like that, it looks still a little bit really over. good. But I would agree, I think it's a yeah. little over. So let's try, let's try the 32. Yeah. Like oh, that. that looks amazing. That's really yeah, nice. Everything's pr properly exposed. Even the sun's not blown out. Yeah. Even yeah. The, the shadows. Another thing I like to do too is I literally like to walk over to shadows. Let's do it. Because like I look at this tree here. Even the tree looks pretty good. Yeah. It's a little underexposed, but I mean, that's very minimal. And when you think of the speed at which an FPV drone is flying as well, mm -hmm. you know, you're just not even gonna notice that. Yeah, for sure. So that's basically how I go about choosing the ND filters. The same process applies if I'm just shooting handheld on the GoPro or anything mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, so I want to talk a little bit more about once you raise the frame rate. And the reason you wanna do that is if you wanna get some awesome mm -hmm. slow-mo shots. Um, I know a lot of action sports use this. So if you're doing a sick flip on a snowboard mm -hmm. and, you, and you wanna slow the footage down, you're going to have to raise the frame rate so that you have extra frames to slow it down in post. So the, the standard rule to get the natural looking motion blur is have your shutter speed double, double the, frame the frame rate. rate. So if you go up in frame rate, you're gonna also have to go up in shutter speed, right. which means you're letting less light in. So maybe we'll have to use a less of an ND filter, like an ND8. So let's go ahead and set your let's frame rate to a 120. Yep, we'll do a 4K 120. So you're gonna set your shutter to 240, yep. one over 240. One over 240. Mm -hmm. So let's see what it looks like now. And notice it looks a lot darker. It's I would say darker. that's a little underexposed. You can see here when I'm like looking at the trees and the shadows, it's really mm -hmm. dark. Now granted, I have sunglasses on, yeah. but I'd it's still say that's a little under. So I think we go to the 16. Yeah, let's try ND16 and see how that looks. The 16 looks really good. Yeah, this looks right. I would highly recommend you guys, again, don't try and compensate if it's a little dark with ISO. Mm -hmm. especially on GoPros. You really add a lot of graininess when you do that. So do your best if you're on a bright day like this, just lock your ISO at 100, especially yeah. on the GoPro. I cannot emphasize that Here, enough. This is the grain we're talking about. So Gordon, go ahead and put your ND filter super high, make it really dark and compensate with exposure for ISO. This is that ISO grain that we're talking about that's not re really desirable when you're trying to get the footage to look as cinematic as possible. It's really grainy and just isn't really pleasing to look at. We're gonna get some sample footage using ND32, ND16, ND8, and ND ND4 and no ND filter to kind of show you guys what different levels of ND look like in this in the lighting condition we're in. So the way that we control these FPV drones is with you know a radio and then goggles. So the FPV goggles allow us to see what the drone is seeing in live time. Basically no latency at all. So these drones are super high performance. They can do really cool flips and they can go any orientation. So you can do a flip and you can be hanging upside down. They're super acrobatic and they can go really, really fast. So they're really cool piece of technology that we use GoPros on. So a lot of the stuff that we do is called FPV freestyle. So we'll go to really cool locations 
locations and do tricks around them and show off. It's kind of like an art to see different styles of flying. All right, so we just got all the test footage. Let's go ahead and bring it back to the studio and get some comparisons of it. Yeah, let's do it. Let's go ahead and get a look at this footage. I'm really curious. I've never done this back to back with different ND filters. Let's do the 32. Let's yeah. start with the first flight. We're not gonna watch this whole thing because I did an eight minute flight on this drone. An eight minute flight, what a legend. Yeah. So we started with this because we wanted to start with what we consider to be proper exposure. This mm -hmm. isn't color graded, it's just flat color. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, it looks really good. The sky's nice, the ground looks nice, um, the shadows too. Yeah. Uh, they look dark and that's a good thing because you want to have some contrast. Yeah, definitely. Um, you can definitely tell that like when you get into some of the really dark spaces. Like there a little bit. Yeah, mm -hmm. and this is ISO locked at 100 as well. But it's not bad, like this is exactly what I would want it. I mean, look when you look up at the sky there, you can see that it's, you know, Yeah, nice. I find I find with GoPros that it's harder to bring back overexposed thing than it is underexposed. So mm. this is kind of perfect for me. Like if I wanted to bring the shadows up, I could. There's still detail there. Just with my experience working with GoPros at least. Right. And one thing too with the one over 60 shutters, you definitely get that motion blur. So oh, yeah. it's something that some of you guys may like, some of you guys may hate. I know I get comments all the time saying I have too much motion blur. Me too. Personally, I like the motion blur. I mm -hmm. also think that when you're flying with janky props, it kind of disguises the way your quad may be flying if mm -hmm. your quad's not flying good. But that's more specific to FPV drones. But for you guys who are new to using cameras and stuff, just keep that in mind. With the 1 over 60 shutter speed, you're going to have a bit more motion blur. And if you're chasing like a really fast object, you may not want that. Yeah. So that's the ND32. Mm -hmm. uh, let's look at the ND16. And the biggest thing to note is we went up in shutter speed, right? Yep. Now we are at 1 1 20th. Yep, still 30 frames a second, still ISO at 100. The exposure is the same, obviously, because mm -hmm. we compensated for that, but there is just a little bit less motion blur. Oh, there's definitely less yep. motion blur. Mm -hmm. I mean, it almost looks like everything is more sharp. Yeah. Um, even though we didn't touch the uh, sharpness settings on the GoPro. You can see when I'm doing a lot of these really fast movements too, like there's really almost no motion blur to it whatsoever, so. Yeah, like when you look in the ground, you can still kind of make out the yeah. leaves and such. Yeah, I'm curious, like, yeah, what it looks like when I'm doing flips and stuff, because I've only been flying with, like, very, like, 1 over 60 shutter speed and stuff like that for the last couple of years. I haven't flown 1 over 120. Okay. So it's interesting to kind of look at it. Like, I'm not really freestyling to my best of my abilities, but yeah. still, like, I just don't, this because I'm not used to the look, I don't like the look. I'm always for more motion blur, or, like, I guess the two times frame mm -hmm. rate rule. I think that always looks best. Yeah, it looks the most cinematic, too, mm -hmm. usually. But this is good. I mean, this is what 1 over 120 looks like. With the um, ND16. With an ND16 mm -hmm. in bright daylight, and it works pretty well. Yeah. I think it'll be interesting now we're getting into 1 over 240 with the ND8. That's a, I think that's too high of a shutter, personally. I think it's way too mm -hmm. high of a shutter, but let's see what it looks like. Mm -hmm. I can definitely feel like the shutter is way too high right now. Yeah. The downside, too, on the GoPro is now we, were, we had clouds, so, like, the light was changing. This might actually look a little dark to you guys, and it, and it probably is, but you can only do so much because you know, the sun was going behind the clouds. Yeah. Ooh, that was a nice trip there. Thanks, Ooh, bro. That, the like the little dive into the vanier mm -hmm. roll. Mm -hmm. There were a couple of these flights where I was like, man, this is a good flight. I kind of like wish I didn't have a 1 over <laughs> 240. You can see here it's really oh, yeah. dark with that 1 over 240. The moment that, uh, the downside to locking your shutter speed is like, if you lock it super aggressively, mm -hmm. you know, if you, if, you know, sun goes behind a cloud or something like that, then this is a good example of what will happen. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're having an ND8 or an ND32 with 1 over 60, the same exact thing can happen. Yeah, I think so one way to compensate for that, if you want to lock your shutter, is have your ISO minimum at 100 and ISO maximum at like 400 or 800, mm. at 400 or 800. Um, to kind of compensate for that a little bit. Anything mm. above 800 is uh, too much grain in yeah. GoPros at least. I agree. Now this is the ND4. This is the last ND filter that we had. Okay, so now we're at 1 over 480. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Star speed is so high. <laughs> you and I can see it. It, oh, yeah. it, it, it almost looks stuttery. Like, like if we just pause any frame, we can just make out all the... And you can... Yeah, I mean, Yeah. It's just... Honestly, the exposure doesn't look bad, to be honest, but man, it just... The shutter speed is way too high. Mm -hmm. I think if you guys are out there and you're flying FPV drones, I recommend having just a little bit of motion blur. I really think yeah. it helps. Helps disguise all your corrections as well as if your drone is not flying. I mean, that's truthfully one of the reasons I use it is because, like, mm -hmm. I don't stabilize my footage. Yep, same. And so there are still going to be a lot of minor corrections and bobbles and stuff here and there. We're not flying with perfect drones or perfect props all the time. Yeah. And so you definitely want to have that shutter speed to your advantage. Oh, I know Please. you wanted to Maddie that right there. I know. <laughs> I just was like, we're filming an episode, mm -hmm. and I don't really feel like walking. <laughs> so now we're going to go to the final one, which is the no ND. No ND. And yep. this is with an auto shutter. So I'm curious how this looks because 
when I was using the Session 5 for the longest time, even with NDs, I used Auto Shutter because I only I had so many issues getting into the GoPro app yeah. <laughs> that I just used Auto Shutter and I knew it would look decent. But sometimes in a flight, it would be way too much motion blur. Sometimes mm -hmm. there'd be like no motion blur. Yeah. And that got kind of annoying. And it's interesting here with no ND, it's actually favoring what I would describe as like a colder exposure where it doesn't feel quite as bright or as hot. Okay. And you, at least when you're on top of the trees, when you're below the trees, you can see it's adjusting the shutter speed a little bit. Yeah. It's lowering it. But when you're on top of the trees, it's way higher of a shutter speed. <laughs> Look at yeah. how high the shutter was there. Yeah. You can just see there's no blur on that tree. It looks pretty similar to the ND4. Um, mm -hmm. I would say the sky in this case, because we're not locking the shutter, the sky in the back is really blown out. Yeah, like it's just it's super white. It's super blown out. And this is me, I was trying to haul too, and you can see there's like no motion blur. And yeah. some people really, really like that. I don't, I don't, I don't like it, man. Per, respectfully, I don't like it. It makes me feel like, it makes me actually look like I'm going really, really fast, to be fair. I feel like more motion blur makes it look really I do faster. too, but man, that made me feel like, maybe just from watching him back to back, it did. Mm -hmm. Well, my consensus, mm -hmm. after just watching all these clips, I, I like the ND32 the best, just the motion yeah. blur look of it. I would also fly the ND16 look of it in, in that lighting. We're not saying, by the way, that the ND32 is the best of all these filters. Mm -hmm. What we're saying is that with those lighting conditions and everything, the ND32 is the best choice because yep. we both like having our shutter speed being double of what our frame rate is, and mm -hmm. 1 over 60 is always just naturally a very good shutter speed as well. Yeah. So like if we were flying in later evening times, you know, maybe closer to sunset probably, yeah an ND8 or maybe even this ND4 would be really good. Yeah. It just depends. I mean, that's the thing. We showed you guys how to do all this. Yeah. So hopefully, whether you're flying an FPV drone or whether you're just using your GoPro for something, you can use these ND filters and you can go out and have a great experience. If you guys want to pick up some of these ND filters, we sell them here at our store, rotoriot.com. Just type in camera butter ND filters and they'll pop up. We sell ND4, 8, 16, and 32, and we mm. also sell a bundle. So you can buy all mm. four of these ND filters and you will be good for any lighting condition. These were first kind of made for FPV drones. Mm -hmm. And our FPV drones, we're smashing into stuff all the time. Crashing a lot. We're crashing a lot. <laughs> So the last thing we want to do is be scratching up our lenses. Yeah. We don't want to be replacing these things because we crash a lot. So it gets very expensive quickly. So mm -hmm. these were made to be very durable. So if you're someone who's using a GoPro, which again, this is what you would be using those on. Yeah. Like you can trust that you don't need to buy a ton of these. And like we're flying them on our FPV drones. They yeah. do break eventually. Yeah. But for the most part, they're way more durable than any other indie filters that I've used on the market. They're made out of Gorilla Glass, so yeah. it's really tough. And, and it's a high-quality glass, too. That's mm -hmm. not to say that the glass itself is being sacrificed. The glass yeah. is very, very high-quality. I think if you did a side-by-side -side with some of the other uh, competing brands, you probably wouldn't even notice a quality difference. But the durability is a huge improvement on these. I agree. All right, thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Rotor Riot. We do FPV drone content. I hope you guys liked this episode where we did more deep dive into GoPro. We post every Monday, so make sure that you like this video to hit the thumbs up like button and also to subscribe and right yeah. next to it there's a little bell notification so you can get pinged when we post every monday at 4 p.m and i think that's a wrap for this episode any questions that you have about gopro or yep. any settings drop them in the comments below we will definitely be down there to answer them and i'm bubby fpv i'm alex vanover and i'll see you guys next time on the road see ya